the problem is that the soil, even though it is wet now, there are no puddles anywhere. So the water just flows down directly into the ocean. Hi, I'm Scarlett and I'm starting a permaculture project here on the east coast of Mallorca. Follow along as I document the whole process of transforming this derelict piece of land into a food forest. Hello, hello and welcome back. It is a hot and sunny day today and it might not be the best day to start this new project that I am just about to line up but I do it anyway because it's gonna be good to start and I want it to be done before the first rains come in autumn and I just felt like trying this system that I had in mind today so that's what I'm going to do So what I am working on is to make our first berm below the lowest line of fruit trees that we planted this spring. And the goal of this berm is to slow down the rainwater once we have our first rains. And we're gonna use these uh, rocks that we have been taking out to dig the holes for our trees. So the system that I have in mind is something that I saw people using, especially in Africa and India, meaning in countries where they don't have a lot of money or resources for big machines. I first saw the use of stone lines in this video that I linked above. In the Sahel, this method has been used by some farmers traditionally. It convinced me because we don't need to use heavy machinery and can use the resource we have an abundance of, rocks. So how does it work? The contour stone lines are only about 25 to 30 centimeters high and act as a semi-permeable structure slowing down runoff water and allowing the deposition of rich sediment behind the barrier. So less erosion but more water for the crops. One of the permaculture principles says, use small and slow solutions. And this is exactly what we are doing here. Luckily, our existing tree lines have already been placed almost on contour by the previous owners. So we can use them as a guideline. To stabilize our stone lines, we planted a row of vetive and lemongrass behind the barrier. Vetive is a really cool grass because it roots down to 3 meters deep. Not that we have that much soil here, but anyway. The vetive plant is drought tolerant, frost and wildfire resistant and survives heavy grazing pressure. Besides its function to stabilize soil and protect it against erosion, vetive can be used as animal feed. And from the roots, etheric oil is extracted and used for cosmetics. We will cut back the grass regularly and use it as mulch to protect other species. Because of its deep growing roots, vetive can reach minerals other plants can't. So it is very nutritious. I started planting the first vetiver and lemongrass saplings a week ago on a very stormy day and I bought them at a very cool store in Spain and they were really kind and sent me all the instructions and in what distance I would have to plant them and I didn't. So we're back here, I have the help of a new friend today and we're filling in the gaps in our grass rows because obviously the idea is to fill in the whole row that the grasses actually capture 
all the runoff or all the organic material that comes with the runoff. So it's quite important that they grow dense enough that we don't have any gaps. I decided that the typical permaculture berms and swales are not the right solution for our land. But luckily we were able to install some real berms and swales for a client on the north coast of Mallorca. I just arrived at a beautiful plot in the north of Mallorca and this is actually the place where we're gonna do our first planting like outside of San Silva so I'm super excited. I am here to mark out the two swales that we're gonna dig and also the holes for our new trees. As you can see it's pretty wild but um, very different from our side. The soil is very different, even the rocks are different. But we did mark out the swales, you can see it on my finger, but also on the, in the back here. The yellow line is uh, one of the key lines that we're gonna plant our new trees on. If you've read about permaculture, I'm sure you already heard about swales and berms. This is a method used widely by permaculturists all over the world to store and sink rainwater. By lining up swales on contour, we can slow down runoff and let the water sink in right where you plant your edibles. They also catch all the organic matter, which acts like a sponge and holds even more water. So swales are a great solution to build up soil and to use every last drop of water you get. Which is particularly important in this dry Mediterranean climate we have here. The swales are coming along. He's working very fast so I think it will take him about a day to take the two swales and also add the holes for the trees. I'm very happy to dig the first swales here because I had so many comments about the food forest back at my place and why I'm not digging any swales. Um, and there seems to be quite a misunderstanding about swales in permaculture because a lot of people use them and they're really great to collect rainwater. But one big aspect about permaculture is that you use the methods that are right for your land. And in my case, that's not a swale because I don't have enough soil to dig anything. So we would have to dig all the swales with a drill hammer, which would be insane. That's why I'm using a different method. And I would really appreciate it if the permaculture community would be more aware of that you know some people do things differently and that's not a bad thing not every permaculture project has to have berms and swales but in this location it definitely is the right solution i am really curious to see how the stone lines and the swales perform in this climate stay tuned for our upcoming videos to see the results Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.